We have seen the fourth sutra, Jnana Dishthanam Matrika. The sequence of uh, manifestation of consciousness, mind has the thought process which we call as knowledge, awareness, cognition. And that too is grounded in pure consciousness, the Chaitanya Mahatma. So from there, all the manifestation, whatsoever is happening in the world or in our experience, is taking place. Now this consciousness uh, has two aspects. One is individual as we experience, individual level. The other is universal level or the cosmic level. So in individual level we have all these developments, intellect, mind and all those. And in cosmic level, the outside world was the perceived, the objects outside. The reason is, without consciousness, nothing is known. If nothing is known, then there is no object. So when we know there is object, so when we don't know of there is no object. So even though when we experience in our uh, empirical experience, the outside world seems to be separate from us, Actually not. If I don't have the mind, then the world is not there for me. If my, my mind is off, there is no world. There is no object. So therefore, in that sense, I can say, that my mind creates my world. My minds give me my objects and my mind is the direct means to get me worldly enjoyments. The reason is each individual's enjoyment is different from other. No two individuals have the same enjoyment. So it shows when the mind is different, the enjoyment is different. We may be seeing the same flower together, but each of us will have different reactions, different experiences. Now, what makes the difference? The mind makes the difference. The object is the same. But I am seeing 
through my mind and you are seeing from your mind. So my mind as my consciousness, my vasanas, my interest. So I am seeing as the object is that my object. So you see your object, I see my object. So the object has nothing to do with the the perception what you have, the cognition what you have. Object is uh, indifferent. It's totally uh, different from all this. You make the object good and bad. The object it ha- itself has no good quality or bad quality. It has its own natural qualities by which it is formed. So now this good bad who makes it? Or mind makes it. Therefore, this this is called Jnana Madhishthana Matrika. So yesterday we were discussing about the Matrikas. Matrika is a very uh, it's a very, very technical uh, in Yoga Shastra and Tantra Shastra and Mandra Shastra and all this. So it, we, we have to discuss it in a long way how this Matrika and energy and Mantra and this is. But uh, in this uh, Shaiva philosophy of Kashmir, Saivism, they discuss about this Matrika, Shakti and all those things. Because they have a theory of vibration, the Spanda theory. Spanda is vibrating, vibration is everything. So this world is formed from the first vibration of Shiva. That we chant the uh, sloka, so that sloka says that. The first vibration from there the world is formed. So that vibration is called Shakti. That vibration is called energy, power. And then all this comes and then the sound forms because we know if there is vibration, even a little vibration, a tiny vibration, then from there the sound forms. First humming sound and then it moves into different levels. Similarly, uh, in Tantra Shastras, we have uh, Para, Pashyandi, Madhyama, Vaigari, the four level of sound. So the sound we pronounce is called Vaigari. This is Kari, it says a very clear, clear words pronounced. And before this, there is a stage of Madhyama. The sound that we feel it, because before pronouncing, we are supposed to feel what we are going to pronounce. That we see the sound, see the object, and the name we see is called the Madhyama. And before that, before that, it's called Pashyanti. So you will just uh, feel like talking now, you know. Uh, you may think that I will talk about it. Something like that. It's a thought process. In which you identify the object and then the words are formed, the sentence is formed, then the pronunciation happens. And before that is called para. So para is unidentified word, unidentified sound. Para is never experienced. It's before our reception. It's just uh, behind it. It means that is the cause of the sound, the cause of vibration. So from there it comes. So it, it, uh, it can be experienced in samadhi, in deeper level of samadhi. That is para. So it is formless and then it gets a it gets thought form and then sentence form and then pronounced form. These are the four steps of va. Four steps of sound. Like I can't have sound my people like that. I can't have sound in the morning.
It is it is in the form of pasyanti. It is in the form of pasyanti. So you cannot bring that. Sometimes we feel that there is something we want to say something, but it is not clear, or we we are unable to uh, collect the words, correct words for that. It, it is pasyanti. It is in the form of pasyanti. about something the duality must be there the thinking itself in duality so like uh, as we said the aham aham should be uh, in two forms like in individual form and then in universal form so when it is in uh, individual form we are identifying it but the universal aham universal iness i consciousness is not identified so which is identified is called individual consciousness and unidentified it means uh, as we experience in deep sleep the same thing we are unable to identify what we are experiencing so it is uh, all pervading so we have duality in experience and without duality only uh, we have one stage in a deep sleep and another stage in samadhi if mind is there the duality is there and the madhurga and all those forms from there if consciousness is there then it, it comes so the consciousness is there means there is no if consciousness is there or consciousness is there always there but the question is when we are when we identify and when we are not so this is makes the difference this is a we have to discuss separately this is a long discussion how the process is there is because in this sutra they as as i mentioned before they condensed uh, all the theory so in the, with the one word you can elaborate much therefore in each class we have to uh, take the background otherwise mind will not come to the present subject so there is no uh, connection the direct connection you can see from the first sutra to the uh, fourth sutra and fifth sutra so in between there are so many developments so the developments are indicated only indicated not said so that therefore we have to connect this so uh, this matrikas are forms 
Well, we can say individual form or in the cosmic level, in two levels we can say, the sound form. So sound itself is a manifestation now. That we can understand sound itself is a manifestation. In Vedanta also we call it uh, the manifestation from the space. The Akasha Tattva. The sound is the first manifestation from Atma. So that, uh, that is called Matrika. And to understand all this, uh, we have to discuss uh, like you know, the, how the sound is formed and how the connection of the uh, consciousness with the sound, uh, why consciousness becomes sound. So all these matters are there that is in different level because now we are uh, learning at the first level. So we will take uh, with the commentaries like uh, Kshemaraja's commentary and all those are there. If uh, we are interested, we can learn it with uh, the commentary in a long, longer time. It takes more time to learn it. So we will learn later. So this is all the summary, the first and first and information about what is happening. And from this we will get much more information for uh, our contemplation and meditation. So therefore, it is, a, it is a different uh, uh, type of scripture. It's not uh, like when, uh, like we read the uh, Vedantic books or another books. It, it has some mysticism in this. And spirituality, mysticism, and all the theory of creation, uh, the wonderful uh, elaborations are there. So now the fifth sutra is also continuing the Manifestation theory. It is uh, it is said that the consciousness, when it comes in the form of manifestation, we recognize it as in the form of Shiva, Shakti, Vishnu, and human beings, of course, in many forms. And when consciousness in its own form as in the pure bliss, so there only uh, uh, the experience is there. It means you can feel it that it is there, but you cannot prove it. Like uh, if I studied something and now I am not remembering it. My memory is very weak about my previous study. So, as a person, it is normal because if I studied something 10-15 years before, I can slightly remember that I studied it. But it cannot be correctly reproduced. So now I am in between. So what is the feeling is that I cannot say I have not studied, but I cannot even say what I studied. You understand what I say? So it means I have some slight connection, some some feeling that I have studied it. It is there in with me, but I am unable to reproduce it. It is not correctly, clearly coming to my memory. So as, a, as we see the effect of that, if somebody wants the effect of my study, it is not possible now. But I cannot deny I have not studied. So something like this is called the consciousness, the feeling is there that we are conscious, we are, we have something, we, 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 we have our life, but we are unable to uh, say or unable to uh, reproduce it, how the consciousness is working in us. So this is the feeling of I-ness, the I-consciousness. It is same to all. Like uh, if somebody asks, who are you? You can say uh, with our identification, name and form. But we know these names and forms 
whatever we are identifying with is not real. Because name somebody gave and form is also changing. So it cannot be my natural or no, my essential existence. So my real existence is something else. But I am unable to project that. So that what I am. So this is in between the feeling. If we identify at least this much, so that our existence is something else, we are not uh, only this, what we are now, we are something else. So then in between you can live for uh, longer time, or no, practice this, and then one day you will realize so that existence which is in the background is more real than this. So then that is the experience. Now this point is mentioned here in different words. In the fifth sutra, Udyamo Bhairavaha So Udyama Udyama as in Sanskrit word it means a part. Here it is an opening, an open manifestation that is called Udyama. Ud, ud means upward, Yama means some kind of uh, no, uh, work or action or manifestation. So in that sense the Udyama here it means opened the consciousness when it is opened up or revealed in that sense. Then it is called Bhairava. The form of Shiva. Bhairava is the form of Shiva. Uh, the word meaning of Bhairava is frightful. Very terrible. But it means elevation of consciousness, manifestation of consciousness. So Udyama can be translated as elevation. So now what, I, what we were talking about, the consciousness which we only feel. So that consciousness come into the form of action. Then how will be? So you will have full of energy, full of confidence, full of knowledge and your mind will be relaxed. So that elevation will happen. So this is called enlightenment of consciousness. So Udyamaha Bhairavaha, elevation of consciousness is called Bhairava. So the Bhairava here is a technical word in Shaiva Tantra. It's a form of Shiva, the consciousness. That is called Bhairava. Why it takes uh, multitude forms, many many forms, good, bad and all those are manifested from this pure consciousness. So therefore that is Bhairava. Now the Shakti of Bhairava is called Bhairavi. So this Bhairava and Bhairavi is very famous in Tantra. So like we uh, do puja for Shiva, Rudra, so they call it Bhairava and Bhairavi. So they are consciousness and the power of consciousness. The consciousness itself, when it is manifested, that is called Bhairava, and the power of consciousness is called Bhairavi. Now why it is called power? Because Consciousness, when it is in action, it is empowered, it seems to be empowered. Because there is some force. Consciousness in action. Like a, a, a sadhaka, somebody is sitting in meditation, he is very cool. Uh, he is in full consciousness. Which so, means he is relaxing his mind. But if you give some action to him, so he will be fully in action. 
So the same person who was sitting quietly and he uh, when become he is an actor he is doing action with a high degree of force. The energy is in action. So therefore it is called Bhairavi and Bhairava. So this is how it is connected. So the, uh, we can say the knowledge form of consciousness and the active form of consciousness. So the active form of consciousness is Bhairavi and the knowledge form of or the uh, yeah the uh, knowledge form of consciousness is Bhaira. Shakti and Shakti, they are both together. So now, uh, when we know that they are together, one and same, that is the ultimate enlightenment of this fear. Bhairava and Bhairava, they are one. No, no, the Shakti is there in the Atma. The Shakti and the Shakti man, because Atma cannot be without, uh, without Shakti. Yeah, then we call it as a garden. Then we say Nah, yeah, we can say it's Kare Brahma, but they don't use all this Kare Brahma. They have the different form of Shiva. The Sada Shiva is the purest form. Then comes ah, uh, then all these forms are uh, Rudra and Shiva and all those. They use uh, the uh, Shiva's uh, different names for different forms. And Shakti is different names for different forms. So that is the Bhairava. Now, uh, we have the creation of starting from consciousness to the Bhairava. So Bhairava has many forms. Now how we can uh, understand these forms and change these forms or go beyond this creation? So that is mentioned in the tendency. Shakti Chakra Sandhare Vishwa Samhara So Shakti Chakra Sandhane by union with the collective form of shaktis. Chakra means a collection, a collective form of shaktis. Sandhana means union. You connect with. So when you connect with the collective form of, or different form of shaktis, through that, the Vishwa Samhara, the samhara disappearance of creation. Then comes the disappearance of creation. It means when you know the different forms of shakti power in the creation, like we have physical power, as we have physical power. Pranic Shakti, we have Pranic Power, Mental Power, Thought Power, so so many powers and the, we have the power of Consciousness or Awareness. So these are all different forms of power. Similarly, the external world, what we see outside, there are so many powers, fire, water, wind and all, there so many powers. So, these forms of powers are understood or connected with. Then, the Vishwa Samhara. Then you don't have, you, you have no world. Because now world will not bound you. So, you are beyond the world. So, when you understand, when we understand our own existence, and our own abilities, we can use it. So those abilities are under our control. 
So when we understand, we have this, I have this ability and I have this ability and all the abilities. So we can use it. So it means, I am using as a tool, so it is in my control. So the Vishnu Samhara here is a realization of this collective powers. So this power from where it came? From Bhairava, the Udyama. So it is a manifestation of Bhairava. So we have Chakra, Shakti Chakra Sandhane Vishwa Samhara. So the Vishwa Samhara, ultimately what we want, if we ask ourselves, we want, actually we want to do actions, from morning to evening, we are always in action. If we ask ourselves, we don't want to do actions. We want to sit quietly and enjoy. But we think after doing actions, some activities, we will get uh, enough uh, money for our life. So the, when we keep money, we have, we can manage ourselves with that money. So we can sit quiet. So for what purpose we are making money? To sit quiet. And we have our mind, mind is working. From morning to evening, it is making thought, many thoughts, one after another, one after another. This also we don't want actually. We want mind should be relaxed and quiet. But mind has its own uh, no, actions. It, it, it is always in action. So the, all these activities are not meant for it. These activities are only uh, that we can say we are uh, bound to have. The acti activities are not the, for the, our purpose. So we are making it thinking that if without action nothing is possible. If without thought process, without the physical action, if we get everything, so which way you choose? You choose that without a physical action, Without mental action, if I get everything, I will choose that path. Therefore, really speaking, we want to get rid of all these actions. We want to be completely in peaceful state of, blissful state of consciousness. That is Vishwasambhara. So if you are not getting sleep for one day, what would be your experience? You will be very, very much worried and tired. So all day you are working, they let you, uh, let the body and mind work 24 hours, 48 hours, like that. No. After working, we want to get sleep and get a good sleep. So it means that is our nature. So that is Vishwa Samhara. So when there is no world, we are it in complete peace. So when there is action and reaction, we are going out of our very nature. So that is Vishwa Samhara. Now, what are the forms of actions? which are the stages of action and reaction, and which is the stage beyond all these actions and reactions. That is mentioned in the seventh sutta. Jagra Swapna Sushupti Bhede Turiya Bhoga Sambhavaha So we have totally four stages. 
The first stage is very famous, Jagrat. It's called waking stage. Second one is Swapna, dream stage. Third one is Sushupti, the deep sleep. So these three stages are very natural. Without effort it comes and goes. And Jagra Swapna Sushupti Bhete. So after this, when we recognize and distinguish these three stages, Jagra Swapna Sushupti Bhede. Bheda means distinction or distinguishing the three stages. Okay. Then what happened? The fourth stage comes. As Turiya. Turiya. Turiya means horn. Turiya in Sanskrit means horn. Now how it comes? It's very easy, very simple. It says, you know what is your waking state is? If you know what is your dream state is? If you know what is your deep sleep is? Then you know what is the Turiya is. How? The simple theory is the knower and non is always different. Knower and non, the object and subject. Okay? So now, these three stages are object for some subject. So then the subject is the fourth one. If I am seeing this, 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 then I am the fourth, no? So I see all these three. So I see all these three from, different from me. It's supposed to be different from me. I see uh, waking state. I understand what is waking state is. So the waking state is objectified by me as subject. So the, I am different from the waking state. I must be different from, otherwise I cannot see. If I am not different from this object, this table, I cannot see it. I am not seeing myself. And myself cannot be seen by myself. Therefore, the subject cannot be seen or subject cannot be Objectified. Subject is always subject. And object is always object. The object cannot be made subject and subject cannot be made object. This is a fundamental theory of Vedanta. So the object is object and subject is subject or you are different from the object, so you are only subject. This is what Vedanta Tarkata. Kishma Dhatma Pratyaya Gojara Yoho Vishaya Vishaya Noho Sama Pragasava Virudha Subhava Yoho Idhar Edhar Bhava Anubhavatta Siddhaya Tad Dharmana Mabhi Sudharam Idhar Edhar Bhava Anubhavatta This is the first sentence of Brahma Sutra says. So there, the two are there. So you don't take the other, the object as subject and subject as object. So now your body is also object for you. So you are not the body. Why? You know, this is my body, um, body was in a different stage, now it is changed and now, now I am I'm here and now, you know that. So, the knower of these three stages, Jagra Swapna Sushupti, is Turiya. So, Turiya Abhoga Sambhavaha. Then if you uh, distinguish Jagra Swapna Sushupti, then the experience, Abhoga means the a beautiful experience. The lovely experience of Turiya can come. So the Turiya is the knower of first, second and third stages. So he is always the knower. Always the subject of all these three. So the integral awareness of three stages is called Turiya. So, Turiya is not different from the stages. The integral or the, what is a, 
unseparated awareness of each stage is called purity so you know jagrat so in jagrat also turiya is there if you know swapna because you are seeing the dream no so the in swapna is turiya is there the fourth one who is seer the seer is there and the sushupti you experience the deep deep sleep so the experience there is there pasyan neva na pasyati pasyan neva na pasyati हाँ न दृष्ट दृष्टे विपरी लोगो विद्य दे यू सी देर देर इज नो सीयर इन द डीप स्लीप बट दैट इज नॉट ट्रू द सीयर इज देर बट सीयर इज नॉट वेरी क्लियर देर फॉर दिस फोर्थ स्टेज इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग जस्ट थिंक अबाउट द थ्री स्टेजेस नॉट ओनली थ्री स्टेजेस इफ यू आर मेनी मोर यू कैन थिंक अबाउट दैट लाइक Uh, you can think I was a child, I was a, a teen, and I, I am now youth, and all this. This also you can. And sometimes I am happy, sometimes I am, I am unhappy. So this also can be thought. So these are all objectified. So the stage uh, who, who is different from all these stages is called Turiya. So Turiya Abhoga Sambhava. Now. nothing would worry you because if something comes as worry the object of worry you think oh this is connected to mind and the body and body has this problem so mind is taking that problem and they are born making the problem so it is happening there i am only the seer so body is sick of course body is sick but you are not sick you cannot be sick why because you are treating the body you are you are a doctor there you are seeing the body and saying no you see body has some sickness so uh, you should treat so then we decide to treat the body and get the medicine and treat this is happening this is actually what is happening but what we think is i am sick and i am treating it it cannot be because the doctor and the patient should be different no? So doctor, have to be the patient, and patient cannot. So the patient is body, and you are the doctor. So you are uh, treating it and trying to get the medicine and all those. And uh, after some time, when everything is all right, you are satisfied. Okay, now our patient is good. We got better health. So like that. So this way, the body, mind, constitution is all connected to the subject. Atma and Atma is objectifying that. So now we can say we will make a scientific formula where there is objectification. You understand what is objectification? Making the object, the object. There is the difference between subject and object. This formula is. Fakka. So wherever I say my, so the minus is different from minus. This is another problem. So you apply this, you will get the correct answer. I say my body, so the body is different from body. I never say I am the body. We don't say that. This is my hand. There is my is there. I never say I am hand. Nobody say that. The head is very important. The body, the head is not there. Nothing will happen. But even then, we never say I am head. We only say it is my head. I have headache. It is connected to head. And when headache comes, what we say? I have headache in my head, but I am not headache. <laughs> it is not said like that it means that is what we are saying is correct because i cannot i, I can have i have a headache in my head but i am not headache i am different from that therefore i know what is headache is the headache cannot know what is headache is this is the language we say 
uh, but uh, uh, you, you can think about this because you are all new to this style of uh, language. <laughs> so therefore, you just contemplate it. It is very interesting, uh, very simple and very interesting. Knowing, yeah. Ah. Uh, are a reflection of the three states, uh, like Jagra, Jagra, Shukri, and Sapna? No, no. Subject and object and knowing is not reflection of Jagra and Shukri. So, Jagra and Shukri is at different stages of consciousness. So, different stages of consciousness, how it is? Like in Jagra, we have sense organs and objects. So that we will define what is Jagrat, the next sutras are coming for that. So that is Jagrat. So we have uh, outside objects as well as inside objects and consciousness and senses, then all sense organs, everything. And in uh, deep sleep we don't have outside objects, the actual objects. Only we have the reflection or the, or the subtle objects, uh, the uh, subtle form of objects, sukshma. And then deep sleep, we don't have any objects because mind is not working there. But we know. The knowledge is there. That is why it is Surya. Because we know, we feel it. The feeling is there still. In all the stages, the feeling is there. The I am, the I am feeling is there always. So I know this is there. Without that, you will not have these stages. Ah, yeah. In all the three stages, in all the three stages, this triputi is called triputi. Subject, object and the knowing. The perceiver and perception and perceived. So these three are there in all the stages. That is the, uh, that is the form of perceiving. Now what is perceiving? Perceiver, perception, and perceived object. This is called perceiving. So this is always there. That is uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, connection with the outside external objects and internal objects. The both way is. So now the next sutra says about what is Jagrat. Now we have Jagrat Sapna Sushupti. Jnanam Jagrat. You see, this jnana word is used everywhere. Even for the ignorance, they use the jnana. So, jnanam jagrata. Knowledge is waking. The waking means waking stage. It means when the subject, object and the knowing process is there. Very clearly. The perceiving process is there, that stage is called Jagrat. When the subject is in connection with, in contact with the object. The subject is in contact with the actual object, outside objects, external objects. That stage is called Jagrat. So, this is very clear. We know it, how it happens. And subject and object connection. How one object is connected to subject? Because object has the existence outside, seemingly outside, but it has the existence inside as well. How? When we are identified an object, the outside object we identify as a, as, an, as a pot, as a mat or something. So the brain gives the names that this is mat and you already know it. This is what brain says. You uh, must have uh, read in scientific or uh, no, when you study in science. It's not that we, when you see, you are knowing the object. It's not. When you see, 
the brain says you already know it. You know it. So then I say, oh I know it. It's already known. And the knowing process is not identified. That's all. Because we don't know how we knew it. We only know, we know it. Okay. So this stage is called Jagrat. And in this stage, there can be doubts. There can be confusions. There can be illusions. There can be superimposition. There can be all the misunderstanding in this stage. Why? Because other than the subject as an individual, there are so many other factors working together to make this happen. Therefore, there is much chance of confusion. If is all the outside supports, then you will get correct knowledge. So without that is not possible in Jagrat. They like, so if you, I want to know what this is. So I must have enough light, enough light and I should be uh, very much uh, mindful to know that. Then the distance should be correct. If it is too far, I cannot know. If too close, I cannot know correctly. There are so many factors. And my mind should recognize it. And my eyesight should be clear to uh, identify the color. Otherwise, uh, you may change, you may uh, wrongly know the color. So there are so many factors connected to this knowledge, the Jagrat knowledge. Therefore, all confusions are bound to happen in this darkness. So sometimes that what we as we see as a very beautiful, it may not be very beautiful as we see it. Sometimes what we see as ugly, it may not be ugly. All the forms we are we see is a different thing. Because uh, there are so many diseases, no? Some disease I, I heard about that. I saw a girl, uh, she is having this problem. She cannot see so many designs. Like we see with a carpet design, she will be uh, irritated. She, she cannot, I don't, know, I don't know what happened. She doesn't like seeing different uh, colors together or uh, different designs like this, no? If you concentrate for half an hour on this mat, it's so many uh, you know, uh, what is there, differences, colors and uh, uh, designs and all those. Uh, so, the mind gets confused. It cannot concentrate. But we enjoy it. Seeing the, we say the beautiful. But actually we are not seeing the beauty of that. We cannot see it for a longer time. This, uh, there is some uh, uh, connectivity problem with the eyesight. Because I, eyesight, eyesight cannot uh, actually uh, identify too many colors at, at one time. That's, that is the natural of eyesight. Even a good eyesight cannot do that. So some confusion is there. But even then we enjoy it. Like uh, seeing a Film we enjoyed, even though there are so many cruel, you know, so many problems, murder and all those. But we enjoyed. I don't know how we enjoyed, but enjoy something happened. So, so all what is happening there is not the good things, but we enjoy. This is all. I, what I am trying to say is this: uh, this jagra, this the waking state is not real. What we are seeing, we don't know what we are seeing and what we are enjoying. Why? Why we are enjoying? We have no. So therefore, so many factors are connected to it. We are calling agency Like about death. 
So you see, that is only your information. You and me never experienced what is death is. And nobody experienced. And who experienced, they are not here to say what it is. So now we have a information. We don't know that is correct or wrong, why we don't know. But people say everybody die and uh, uh, death is something like this. So the uh, body is off and all this, uh, they define it. So we, after uh, learning all this, we made a concept about it. So with that concept, we are leaving that this, uh, this is correct, the correct concept. Now, without knowing also, mind can make all these concepts. So knowing and experience is not necessary for thought process. Thought process, only the idea is necessary, the concept and words and forms are necessary. If you give words and forms, the thought process will come and you can make. Because mind has a special kind of imaginary power. The ability to imagine. That is the development of mind, as you know. What is IQ all about? IQ all about is the, the ability to imagine in a, in a different level. Extraordinary imagination is the power of IQ. So, so that's it. That, that is what is happening. So you can imagine any world, anything, and uh, uh, without the uh, proof, uh, actual uh, happening, can, which is possible. So that is how we are... No, you see, death is never experienced. Only the concept is there. And with that we are fearing them. That what I was trying to say that object here is my own motion of death. Yes. Ah. Yes. What is the, that is you made it. If, because if we, there is no mind, they cannot. That the last uh, uh, no, last two I said no. You are making your own object. The object is generalized for there. But I am seeing my object. You are seeing your object. Each person is seeing here their own object. If the dog sees the dog sees its object. Because the color is different for a dog. Dogs cannot see many of the uh, color we see. So, objects. Hmm. Ah. 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 Yeah, it, it is based on the integral awareness. You are making all this. You can make not only death, you can make the next birth. You can make a world for you and go there and enjoy there, make a house there, everything you can do. So, sometimes when you are so much identified with that, you will actually have the experience. Like, you know, you feel it, I am there. This is a part of Jagra. It is not Swapna. Swapna, Swapna means the, uh, the current perception process will stop. This is under that. So Jagrat has many d- different levels. Uh, no, like no, the poets, uh, poet, they, they write poetry. They have a different different Jagrat. Very interesting. So they see all the objects something different. Then then only they can uh, write uh, poetry, poems. Uh, if you see what it is actually, this is a door uh, made of wood, and this is not poetry. No, so poetry means you have to see something else there. Something, something unnormal, no, but what do you say, extraordinary. So that, that is, that is a different jagra. So they live in that. So therefore for them, the, uh, if, they, if a person is a poet, he cannot have a actual life, the normal life. Because his life is, will be different. I can see in all the poets are that like. Similarly the science, see. Science, scientists, they cannot uh, have a normal life because their all energy is in somewhere else. They cannot have a family life, they cannot have any, any enjoyment of world that other people have. Because the mindset is different. So similarly, as the uh, uh, enlightened um, uh, no, sadhus and swamis and no, mahatmas, they also have different life. They are seeing the jagrat as different. So there are so many varieties. That is called jagrat. Now, similarly, sapna. Sapno vikalpaha. The Swapna dreaming is Vikalpa. He here translates as imagination. Actually, it is not imagination. 
this is all the impressions of jagrat so we can say it is notions of jagrat or the impressions of jagrat imagination is something different imagination yeah, we can imagine only in waking state the imagination is not there in sapna sapna is like no you already recorded many things like we record a video in our mobile phone and after that we see it so the recording process is waking state and after seeing it is called dreaming state so mind has recorded many of many thing is not only in this birth but from previous birth also it has so many recording uh, stored there in their chip uh, storage long storage of this there so it is taking one by one what is needed so it takes that and show to you so this is there this is there and there. and why it is showing like uh, <coughs> we use uh, anti virus for our uh, computers and mobiles you know like you know, for uh, uh, keeping up the programs update uh, at at similarly mind does that this is what is happening you know it's a anti viral program uh, my uh, mind is showing the dream and clearing many things there so seeing dream is good because it is a cleansing process this antiviral i used to say this because uh we don't feel any any anything about the dream because we don't have any benefit from the dream because we just dream it what what is there nothing is there but if you don't have dream it is very you should be uh careful in between you should have dream because dream is a cleaning process of mind what is already there in subconscious mind and what what elements uh, the mind doesn't want so mind clear it by dream say like a process of so that is the you can say the notions of uh, waking state or the impressions of waking state which we see as real there in that stage it is so that is called sapnaha so the word vikalpa means false notions the vikalpa the word used for this is false notion so we will see the next sutras next as the time is over om purnamadha purnamidam purnat purnamudasyade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Shanti